It's now time for member statements. Member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today, I want to talk about the housing crisis in Hamilton. All along the housing continuum, we're seeing a crisis of affordability, and it's impacting safety, health, and dignity of Hamiltonians. Over the past decade, the average price of a house in Hamilton has doubled. So has the average rent. According to the Social Planning and Research Council of Hamilton, 45 per cent of renters are living in unaffordable housing. Right now, there are more than 15,000 people on a wait list for subsidized housing in Hamilton. As a result of unaffordable housing, people are living in substandard conditions, and Hamilton shelters are at capacity. Food bank visits are up, especially among children, <coughs> as families are spending more and more of their income on housing. It didn't have to be this way. In the 90s, we saw the federal Liberals cut their subsidized housing and download it onto the provinces. And then the Conservative Ontario government, led then by Mike Harris, downloaded it onto the municipalities. And now the Ford government has sided with developers and landlords by scrapping rent controls and making evictions easier. Successive Liberal and Conservative governments have let this housing crisis go on for years, and things are only getting worse. Ontario needs a government that will prioritize and invest in affordable housing, a government that will make sure that everyone right to housing is protected and realized so that people in Hamilton and across the province can have the safety and security of a roof over their head. Member statements, the member for Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our government is working very hard with the Francophone community to promote the interest and defend the rights and gains of uh, Franco-Ontarians. Our mission is also to open uh, Ontario to business and to employment, including French Ontario. Last week, with Caroline, the minister Caroline Mulroney and her uh, financial advisor, Glenn Maffaro, we had a very fr uh, fruitful roundtable at the round Center of Investment and, uh, bu and Business of Toronto. We exchanged, uh, we talked uh, about networking uh, with le leaders uh, in uh, the region of Toronto, uh, francophone leaders, and uh, to see how we could best put forward our potential towards economic development while harmonizing the efforts of the provincial government and civil society. It was a very good uh, meeting, and I would like to thank all francophones and employees and employers who uh, were involved in this roundtable. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I'd like to recognize the work of Dance Evolution. Dance Evolution is a small business in my writing that's giving back to our community. They're committed to helping their students become confident and empowered young people, Speaker. As part of this commitment, the school is certified as a YPAD school. That's the Youth Protection Advocates in Dance. This means that the school follows age-appropriate artistic choices, healthy teaching techniques, and behaviors that nurture the wellness of their students, including body, positive body image and anti-bullying education. These students not only learn how to dance, they also learn the significance of teamwork, leadership, and building positive relationships with their peers and the world around them. Beyond the studio, the school is actively engaged in Greater Sudbury Community. Students regularly perform at charity events, and they volunteer the Northern Ontario Families of Children with Cancer Father-Daughter Ball every year. Started 11 years ago under the direction of Ms. Ali Loney, and this summer, she's passed the reins on to Ms. Taylor Austin, a longtime student who's now an extraordinary teacher. I'd like to congratulate the school, Dance Evolution, on the positive impact and wish them many more years of developing dancers and our community leaders of tomorrow. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member for Chatham, Kent Leamington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I don't often make triathlon announcements, but when I do, I am so pleased to announce that Dr. Richard Najew and his wife Pauline Najew from my riding of Chatham, Kent Leamington were recently honored on Saturday, November the 23rd in Inglewood, Ontario with Triathlon Canada's 2019 Impact Award. 
This was to recognize her contributions to the sport of triathlon for over 30 years in Canada. And to top it off, Olympic triathlon champion Simon Whitfield presented their prestigious award to them. In addition to their triathlon accomplishments, Dr. Naju also runs a successful optometry business in Leamington, Chatham, Blenheim, and will soon be opening yet another branch in North benefits. Chatham, providing excellent eye care to thousands of people in my community. Now, in case you're wondering, Triathlon Canada is a national organization dedicated to promoting excellence in their sport. Their team of dedicated professionals is committed to the same expectation they have of their athletes and coaches who represent Triathlon Canada. They want to be the best in their field, whether it's on the race course, in the training environment, or in the offices and boardrooms. So, Mr. Speaker, congratulations, Dr. Richard and Pauline Naju, on receiving this very prestigious impact award from Triathlon Canada for 2019. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Temiskamin, Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. As uh, agricultural critic for the official opposition and the deputy leader, I would like to welcome uh, just about every Ontario farm leader <laughs> that I've ever worked with to the House. And I, I, I would suggest that they're probably here for the introduction of uh, the ministers of Hardeman, uh, Minister Hardeman's bill regarding uh, security of trespass. I would like to uh, uh, thank the minister for actually, uh, we've had extensive discussions. I haven't seen the bill. We've had extensive, extensive discussions. I appreciate for that. I would like to thank the government for actually allowing this bill to be standalone. Because one of the worst things about politics yeah. is when you mix something good with something not so good. Yeah. And I hope and I trust that there will not be a poison pill in this bill, that this bill is actually coming from the right place. Um, we cannot pre-predict whether a bill will pass, but we all, I believe, on this, in this House share the same goal that animals, farm animals, should be protected from disease, protected, and from one of, the, one of the ways to do that is to protect the biosecurity of the farm and also of farm families. Absolutely. But, and if, with that goal in mind, we are looking forward to debating this bill. Looking forward to working, continuing to work with farm groups, uh, continuing to work with the minister and the ministry to try and get the best solution possible. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Last month, along with a number of our colleagues, I had the pleasure of attending Ontario Volunteer Service Awards, two in Scarborough and one in Markham. Given out by the Ontario government, the awards are a great way to acknowledge the hard work and the dedication of volunteers in our communities throughout the province. Volunteers are the heart and the soul of our society. Their dedication and service help us grow and prosper. Personally, as the former recipient of 25 Year Service Award, it was very fulfilling to help other people and community organizations. As such, I know the contributions of volunteers to our province and the communities are immeasurable. At the award ceremonies, I was able to meet a number of individuals who are making a great contribution to Scarborough Agent Court with their dedicated service and volunteering. For example, I was able to meet a number of young recipients who are growing into the leaders of tomorrow in Scarborough. I was also happy to meet with a number of seniors who have been volunteering and contributing to the community for many years. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the award recipients and thank them for their hard work and continued service to our community. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Brampton Centre. 
Thank you, Speaker. Um, it's an honour to rise here um, today on behalf of the good people of Brampton Centre. Uh, this past weekend, I actually attended a town hall um, organized by the Brampton First Foundation and a number of other concerned community groups. Um, you know, there were a number of speakers, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, who shared uh, a lot of different concerns with us. You know, it's no surprise to anyone here in this house that Brampton is ground zero for hallway medicine. And the participants at this town hall made it very, very clear that in Brampton, we need another hospital. People in our community are tired of waiting in hallways. They're tired of waiting on lists in order to get the health care services they need. Our young people are tired of waiting for mental health supports, and our senior citizens are tired of waiting for long-term care beds. Many also made it clear that education in our community needs to be a priority. Earlier this year, we saw the government cancel a Ryerson University $90 million project, yep. and people in Brampton want to make sure that the next generation has the same educational opportunities as other communities across this province do. Not only are they concerned about the cut of this post-secondary institution in our community, they are concerned that this government is deciding to cut more and more out of our public education system, leaving children in Brampton without the education, again, that they need to move this province forward, Mr. Speaker. They're also concerned about this government's lack of priorities. Buck a beer over making sure that children with autism get services. This is not okay, and the people of Brampton are saying enough is enough. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Further member statements, a member from... <laughs> Etobicoke Lakeshore! <laughs> or the one who sits behind you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to pay respects to, uh, to the recent passing of Richard Arthur Shangro, a longtime resident of Etobicoke and a former district chief of the New, New Toronto and Etobicoke Fire Department. Former Chief Shangro passed away at age 88 on November 23rd of this year. Chief Sh Shangro was known as a no-nonsense type of fire chief who served the people of Etobicoke for 35 years in the fire department. One of the big fires he fought and became known for was the Pittsburgh Paints Fire of July 15, 1976, in Long Branch. It is a fire that many residents still remember. Chief Shangro is survived by his wife of 65 years, Betty, and his children Joan, Valerie, Lois, Brian, and Barbara as well as numerous grandchildren. Chief Sangro was active in the community through the Long Branch Neighborhood Association and the Festina Hockey Club, just to name a few organizations that he supported. I would like to offer my condolences to the Sangro family on behalf of myself and the residents of Etobicoke Lakeshore, and I thank them for the service to our community. Well said. Thank you very much. Member statements. I recognize a member from Niagara West. Thank you very much, Speaker. The elephant is back in the room. Hospice Palliative Care Ontario is back at Queen's Park today, along with their mascot, Ellie the Elephant, to talk about dying, death, and bereavement. We're all going to die, and we're all going to lose loved ones, but generally, we don't want to talk about it. Today, members of Hospice Palliative Care Ontario are talking to MPPs about how a holistic approach to care helps people live well until their last breaths and their loved ones to stay well through bereavement. Hospice Palliative Care is consistent, quality health and social care when and where they need it. It's highly valued and supported by grassroots and government together. Today's event has had all-party sponsorship, and I know that I can count on that same support for my private member's bill, Bill 3, the Compassionate Care Act, which provides for a framework and reporting timelines to help us meet the rapidly growing demand for hospice palliative care due to an aging population. Community-based hospice palliative care is already working to end hallway medicine, help people stay at home or in a home-like hospice setting at a fraction of the cost of hospitals, and it's where people would rather be. It's been great to see this organization team up with our government to provide quality, effective care. It's tr true teamwork improving the quality of life for the people of Ontario, Speaker, because we know that death is death, but dying can also be is still living, and living well is what we all want and deserve. So on behalf of, uh, of Hospice, Pal uh, care, Hospice Palliative Care Ontario, thank you for coming to the reception, and I look forward to all of your support for Bill 3 when it comes forward to a third reading in this House. Thank you. Thank you. Reports by committee. <laughs>